up guys welcome back to the channel my name is travis of course this is twa motorsports and today remember i told you in the last video we're going to be putting wheels on this thing and that is exactly what we are doing today we may have a few other things hopefully we can get some wide open throttle rips in this video um we just got back from the alignment shop guys we had the toe set so now it's actually driving a lot better and we had the ac field and so i drove back about 20 miles with the ac blasting on cold it's about 95 degrees today so either way um he's ready like he's rearing to go we want to get some wheels on this thing uh we bought some different wheels which you guys will see in just one second but he's going to whip the front one's off we're going to start there i think the back one's going to take some massaging um but the fronts are a direct replacement so we're going 17 nine and a half to seven maybe these are 17 nine to 17 nine and a half and um same 275 40 guys i will list the the wheels that we are using as well as the lug nuts i'll list it all in the description below but i'm gonna let him knock these off and uh, we'll show you what we got so let's take a look at what we got you can go ahead with that one um yeah just careful not to scratch it deep dish zr1 wheels uh guys he ultimately decided on these we were going to go with some torque thrust originally uh, he got to looking at some of the old videos that I put up of the black B4C car, and he really liked those wheels. So these are painted centers with a polished lip, and they do look really nice, and they look really good on darker cars. And so um, same size, like I said, in the front, 275, 40, 17. But the back, guys, we went to quite a bit beefier wheel. They look like steamrollers. They are a 315. Are they going to fit? I don't know. We may have to do some massaging back here. We're gonna put the easy ones on first, set it back down, and then we'll move on to the uh, the harder ones. We also got some new lug nuts that look a lot better. You know, they're just, they're not the same as what I wanted to get, but guys, there's not a lot of availability out there. So um, we're gonna get these on, get the front set down. I may walk you guys around once you get the fronts on, and then we'll go to the back and see what's involved with that. We got the fronts on and uh, I do have to say, these wheels look awesome. Um, I think this is a good choice. And look, I'm, I'm a fan of the torque thrust over there, believe me, but these look good also. So he's whipping those back ones off and then uh, we'll kind of see what happens, guys. I don't know. We may, uh, we may have to do some fender roll, I don't know. We may have to beat the crap out of this car to get these wheels on. Okay, problem one. And, and look, guys, we knew this going in it's part of it um we're gonna have to clearance up front here and i'll show you here in a minute so what i had him do was we've got it off the ground we got wheel chocks in the front which is a good idea look at all the rocks the stickers picked up by the way um i'm not even going to bolt this on yet because right now we're rolling but we are so close up here and i'll tell you what i'm going to take this thing off i'm going to put the camera down take it off and i'll show you where i'm talking about i don't know if you guys can see that black mark right there that's one of the areas we're gonna have to focus on. So here's what my plan is. Got an air hammer now. Um, and holy cow, are they nice to have. Because before I did this with a BFH is what they call it, a big freaking hammer. And so what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna fold some of this over here and we're gonna hammer the crap out of this area right here. That's where the front side of the tire wants to rub is in this section right here. Um, I don't think this will be as big a deal. We may not mess with that right now. I didn't even feel up there because all I could, all I could feel was that right there. So I'm going to hammer on that. I'll show you guys my air hammer in a minute, but we're, uh, that's kind of the plan. We'll probably have to recoat this because a lot of times when you beat on this, this coating comes off, which is, that's not a big deal. We'll just put some rubberized undercoating on there. Here's my air hammer actually. And I should have some hammer attachments those are all chisel attachments uh, let me go see if i can find those and we will see if we can get this thing hammered down here we go guys i'm not gonna let you listen to this because it's really loud you really need ear protection um so you know if you're using one of these this this thing believe me it comes in really handy uh, especially for removing ball joints uh, but either way, I'm going to hammer on those areas and I'll kind of cut in and show you guys as we go. We may put the tire up, test it. And the reason we've got it jacked up, we're jacking from the center of the rear end, but then we've got some uh, jack stands in there for just added security. Uh, we want the suspension compressed so we know exactly how the wheels are going to fit. Chances are, if we let this down, the wheels would have fit fine. You would have never even known that this area needed to be worked over. 
check that out, guys. I used to do this by hand with a hammer. That was like maybe one minute of hammering. But that's the area we need to worry about. I don't think it's hitting anywhere else. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to snug the wheel down here. And then we'll go from there and see exactly uh, what's involved. I, like I was telling, I was just telling him, you know, we may have to bolt the wheel down, drive it around a little bit, and then kind of look for the spots that where it, you know, kind of wears, because it'll wear the, it won't hurt the tire as long as it's not sharp, uh, but it'll wear an area and we'll know where we need to hammer more. Went ahead and put a couple bolts in, guys, and you could see that I went, hopefully you can see that, I went all the way down to the bottom of that panel. One thing I completely didn't think about though is, what if the pan hard rod needs adjusted? I may have hammered more than I needed to because the rear end may be off just a hair. So anyway, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have him take the other side off. We'll go ahead and hammer in that same section because we know we're gonna have to do some clearancing there. Uh, but I think we're probably good to go ahead and possibly cinch down the tire and then maybe go for a ride and just kind of see you know, if it rubs, we'll drive it around, you know, have some transitions and see. I don't necessarily think we're gonna have to run, rub the, or roll the fender wells. And the reason I say that, guys, is I really think, unless there was a big dip on one side and brought the rear end up, I think that would be the only time we could possibly get into that. Now, the good thing about that is, the, these are kind of rolled up anyway, I don't know, we'll just have to see. I'm gonna be driving it here for a little while still anyway, so um, I don't have to worry about it. Maybe right now, I'll, I'll hit some of those transitions and maybe I'll see if we have to roll it. But if, if we do, guys, it will be in this video, that is for sure. Got them on, got it on the ground. Um, did the exact same hammering on the same spot over here, guys. So here's my plan. Um, I don't even know that I need to take you along with us as we go. We're just gonna go up and down the road making sure there's no rubbing. And like I said, I'm gonna be driving it to work to finish out the last couple miles we need on clutch break-in uh, before you know we go on some wide open throttle pulls. But um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I These wheels look so good um, for the money. I just don't think you can beat them for the money. I really don't, guys. They look like a way more expensive wheel than what they actually are. Um, so if you guys are wondering, I'll link them in the description, like I said, but uh, it's a Nitto tire, 315, 35, um, 17 in the front, or the back, 275, 40, 17 in the front. It's a uh, Nitto, I can't even think of the name of it, Motive, oh, Motivo, I don't, I'm probably saying it wrong. Motivo, that's how you say it. Um, anyway, I've used Nitto's in the past and I kind of purposely picked a Nitto for my truck, my car over there because the, the Nitto drag reader ran a little bit more narrow and so you could get a little, you know, you could get away with that 315. This on the other hand is the standard size 315. So, you know, you do have to make some clearance issue or clearancing on there. And if you guys do not have an adjustable pan hard rod, we, uh, looked at it and it looks to be pretty set as far as side to side. I think it's. This is a perfect offset for this car. You can see it's literally flush with the fender. There's nothing poking out. We don't have pokey outies. We don't like those pokey outies here. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go down the road. And then guys, I think the next thing you will see is if I have to do any more clearancing, obviously if I have to roll the fenders, uh, I will let you guys know. I will show you that process. But if not, the next thing you're gonna see will be us actually going uh, on some wide open throttle hits. At this point, um, we're at the break-in miles on the clutch, guys. Um, but it's time to change the oil. The oil that I generally choose to use, guys, on like heads cam, stuff like this, is driven. It's LS30 oil. Guys, I, it comes highly recommended by my tuner, Matt at GP Tuning. I've used it, I use it in my ZR1. I just think it's a really good quality oil. Of course, we've got a Wix filter. Uh, you can buy this, I'll link it in the description down below for relatively, I mean, it's not cheap oil, but you can buy it with six quarts and a filter for, I want to say a hundred bucks. I know it's, it's higher than what you would normally spend, but look, it's good. So anyway, uh, besides that, you can also see beside that is an alternator, guys. 
I've delayed this as much as I possibly can. I took this thing up to get the windows retinted on it. Um, we just went back with a 15% on the side. Definitely looks a lot better. There's a big chunk missing because of that piece that was gone you guys saw in the video. But either way, uh, at this point, we're gonna crawl under this thing. I'm gonna get the oil draining and then I'm gonna come back up here, unhook the battery and we're probably gonna start on the alternator as well. So I didn't really wanna change this yet. I wanted to limp through it, but there's just, it's inevitable guys. We're just gonna to have to do it. So either way, I won't show you the oil change process, guys. We're gonna slide under there, get a 15, get that going, get the filter off, put the new filter on. I'm gonna fill the filter up with oil before we put it back in place. Uh, but I will try to show you bits and pieces of the alternator replacement. This alternator, guys, is 180 amp units. The same thing I used on my green truck. And um, they're a little more expensive, but not really, maybe 20 bucks more than a factory replacement. So in my opinion, it's worth it to up the, um, the capacity. You know, this, like I said, 180 amp. I think the stock one on these is 105. If you have a B4C car, I believe it's a 140 or 135. I can't remember. So, you know, the additional equipment like the stereo and the shift light, all the stuff that this truck had before, or this car had before, um, and it's supposedly an upgraded unit also, but it's definitely flickering. The lights are flickering, and I had trouble getting it home. It just wanted to run rough when it was at idle. When I was running wide open or on the highway, it, it seemed fine because it was you know, it was getting some voltage. But these things, I don't even want to go out and rip on it or do any more tuning until the voltage is right because it, it's going to give them inaccurate numbers. So either way, let's get the oil started and then we'll move on to the alternator. Here is how we're going to start the process of the alternator. First thing we need to do is I've already got the eight millimeters disconnected. Guys, make sure you disconnect your battery. The next thing is I think I left my wrench underneath changing the oil, uh, but we need to get a 15 millimeter loosen the tension on the belt and grab the belt off of there and see I just put the belt up here on top of the engine but the next thing we need to do guys and it's going to be really really tough but I'm going to try to use this pick and we're going to go down there and unhook the alternator wire and the reason I want to do that is there is not a ton of tension on on that so or I mean a ton of slack so if you go to take this out you could potentially damage that plug and there's only one wire in it. So it's really easy to pull it out, and especially when they get some age on it. Now this one, as low a miles as it is, it may be okay, but it was also you know, subject to a lot of heat with the turbo. So I'm gonna try to reach down in there. I think I can do this with the pick and get it unplugged. Guys, I fought and fought and I could not do it that way. So what I did was I unplugged the temperature sensor from the side of the head. I unhooked this right here and then unhooked all the throttle body and mass airflow stuff so I could give it some additional slack right there when I let that alternator loose. And so hopefully we can get it from the bottom side. I just cannot reach back there and get it because the plugs on the back side, it's just not working out for me. Now, one thing we do have going for us down here, guys, is that, you know, we have a K member that makes life a little easier on us. but. We need to undo the 13 millimeter uh, power line that's on the back of the alternator. Um, you should be able to reach it. We got to pull that little rubber boot out of the way back there. But we're going to go ahead and get it off first. And then we'll worry about taking our 15 millimeters out, which you should have three of those. I think it's easier to take the bracket out. Um, so we'll probably take all three of those out. And then if you put it back in the side, there's a 10 or a 13, I can't remember, coming in from the back there. Hopefully you guys can see it. So we've got, let's see if I can move my light over here. Got the 13 out that comes in from the back there, in that brace. I've got the 13 out that holds the wire. You can see that it's kind of folded over right here. And so now we're gonna move to the front. Sorry guys, I'm banging the mic on everything, but we're gonna take the two 15s out. We're gonna start there. We may be able to get it out, but generally it seems like every time I've ever taken one of these out, I've had to take the 15 that holds the brace or the bracket as well. So, um, you know, just kind of do what you can. I, it seems to me like if you don't take the brace out, um, you hit the power steering lines and I don't want to mess those up because those are brand new. We just put those in. So, you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to take them all out. That just makes it way, way easier. The old one's out, but check it out. Broke off and it broke off like really, really close guys. So what I did was I soldered a new wire onto it, pulled it out of the holder or out of the plug, 
And so I'm gonna heat shrink this up and uh, we're gonna hope for the best. I think it'll probably be okay. I may dab a little more solder on it also, um, but this is very, very common. It is almost impossible to get that plug out. And if you put any tension on it, these things just snap off. So um, we'll at least have a little slack now. Well, we got it solder back on. Come to find out, um, there was a tape joint right there. So maybe if it were original, we could have got it off without that. But anyway, it's a little more sturdy now than it was. It's soldered, heat shrink. Actually, we double heat shrinked it here because it felt, I don't know, it felt a little flimsy here at the joint. Um, so we put another piece on and then forced that lock back on. So all looking good now. We're gonna thread it back down. I did unplug the O2 sensor down there to give me the ability to solder it up here. We're gonna go ahead and put this uh, thing back in. I'm gonna go back down here with these wires and then we'll just have to look at where we want them put when I get underneath there. But um, once we get that hooked up, then we'll come back up and hook up all our connections like our IAT mass, and math, mass airflow and throttle body and whatnot. Let's take a look at how we got it up in there. Um, so how we did this, guys, is I put it up in there. He threaded the wire down to me. Um, he actually plugged it in while I was holding it up. And actually, I, you can let it rest on the sway bar. I did all this without the bracket. Then we put the 13. We got the 13 started back in the back, the one that comes in from the back. And after that, um, we were able to sneak the bracket up um, and kind of tuck it in and get them started. So all the 15s, all three of the 15s are started as well. So now all we need to do is snug it up and then we'll worry about making our power connection on the back, which I kind of wanted to reroute one of these grounds anyway. So we may do that at the same time. Uh, but really guys, 37 foot pounds is all you need to torque this down to. Um, or if you want to get it, you know, just good and snug, just don't overdo it. It is going into aluminum. We got everything back on, including the belt, all the plugs hooked back up. Um, I think probably one of the hardest parts is getting, obviously, the plug undone without breaking the wire like we did, but also putting the line back on the back, the power line that goes on. It is way easier with a um, K member like what we've got, believe me. But I think he's got, you got all the oil in? So he's got five quarts in there. We pre-filled the filter, so I think we're going to check it, and then we'll probably fire it up, and hopefully everything works good. I think we got the belt on. Looks like alignment's good, so, you know, sometimes those alternators, aftermarket-wise, they don't, the depth isn't right. So just make sure that you watch that when you start it up, but um, hopefully that fixes our issue. Well, the time has come. Got the uh, laptop. We're getting ready to start it. He wanted to see some heat in it first, so we're going to start it right here. We're gonna make some pulls and we're gonna see how it goes. So uh, I may hand the camera over to him here in just a second and um, we're gonna try to make some wide open throttle hits. Alternator seems to be charging good now, which obviously we had an issue before and definitely needed replaced. So wish us luck here. Probably gonna do it in a second. I'm hoping we'll for a little more traction. second to first um, didn't hurt anything but luckily at least it doesn't seem like it we've been driving around for about five ten minutes since I did it but that's how it goes you know especially getting used to a car and a new shifter I hate the shifter but anyway I should have just kept the camera on I guess it was right after we stopped filming that last wide open throttle pull but we're gonna hit it again here when traffic clears out. And give him the 
camera again. Probably break the tires loose here. He's in the driver's seat now. Any takers on whether he'll kill it first go. Kind of on an incline, but we're facing downhill. I think he's gonna kill it. Oh, he didn't kill it. Oh my goodness. Good job. It was rough, but it wasn't, it didn't die. Oh, we got another stop sign here. We'll see again. Which way do you want me to go? Just go straight. <laughs> the port clutch. But you didn't kill it. It's got enough torque that it rides through it. All right, we'll turn the camera off and leave him be. I just was going to give him a hard time. I figured he'd kill it first go but maybe he's been practicing. I don't know how, but maybe. We made it back. We're alive. Um, <laughs> I, I was giving him a hard time driving, guys, but I, I didn't want to keep filming. He actually got way better as we went along. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a quick learning curve generally between gears. It's the starting and stopping, especially on a hill. And we got to a point where there's a pretty substantial hill that he did well on. But I, like I said, I didn't want to film anymore. I didn't want to annoy him, but the car actually ran flawlessly, guys. I have no complaints with the way the car ran. It ran absolutely stellar. Um, no issues whatsoever. Of course, we're sending that tune uh, to be looked over by Matt at GP Tuning, and then he'll get back with this and, you know, with an update. Hopefully, everything is good. There was no knock. Um, no issues and guys i have not done a money shift in probably 15 years i don't it, it's just trying to get used to this shifter it is so much different than anything i've had before um i don't think if this thing had a stock shifter that i would have done that so and for you that or for you guys that don't know what a money shift is a money shift is a full throttle second back to first thinking you're going into third so they call that a money shift because generally it costs you money and you break stuff, but luckily we didn't. Um, there's no noises in the engine. A lot of time on these LS motors, you'll bend a push rod. Um, no noise though. So hopefully we didn't hurt anything. We continue to drive it for probably another hour after I did that, but that's how it goes sometime. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Um, you know, we got a lot accomplished in this video. Of course, the wheels make this thing look so much better. I really should have got some rolling shots. Um, when he was driving, my dad came over and went out and drove with him a little bit. Um, I told him, you know, sometimes maybe you can learn something from somebody else. You know, I thought maybe my dad could offer him something as far as learning um, how to release the clutch. It's, it's just not, I'm, I don't know that I'm the greatest teacher, but maybe he could learn something more. But got the wheels, uh, obviously we got the new alternator on and um, got some full throttle rips, which is what we were wanting to get accomplished. But if you guys are enjoying this build on this car, we're getting close to being finished. I think the next video you'll see on this will be completely done with the tuning process. We'll remove the wideband and we will get um, the shift light installed as well as the pillar. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the pillar is still missing on that side uh, because I want to tie in to where the wideband's hooked up. But anyway, guys, if you are enjoying this, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, go down there, hit the subscribe. Of course, ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.